My Concordia Publishing House Lutheran Study Bible English Standard Version entitles today's gospel lesson, The Parable of the Prodigal Son. Now the word prodigal doesn't appear in the Bible, so I looked that up in my Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And that defined prodigal as one who spends or gives lavishly and foolishly. And to be sure, we've got a prodigal son in this text. The younger boy. He's the one who goes to his father and says, Give me the share of the property that belongs to me, that's coming to me. Now, with that statement, that younger son has lavishly and foolishly spent his relationship with his father. For in saying to the father, give me my share of the property now, he's in effect saying to the father, you're dead to me. Because he would get the money once the father's dead. He's speeding it up. He's saying, I don't want anything to do with you, old man. I just want your money. And the father divides the property between the younger son and the older son. And the younger son in no way is done living a prodigal life. Shortly after his give me the money speech, Junior packs up his bags and the property he got from dad and all that he has, and he sets off for a journey to a faraway country. And when he gets to that country, let the prodigal party begin. It's all about wine and women and drugs and everything else that falls under the category of reckless living. And so he's quite prodigal because now he has lavishly and foolishly spent all that he received from his father in the money. And he's not done. Once he got rid of all the money through his reckless living, a severe famine hits in that country. So he does what he has to do. He goes out and he hires himself to one of the countrymen. And that countryman gives him a job feeding pigs. And with that, this young man has lavishly and foolishly spent his Jewish dignity by taking a job in which he is now feeding an unclean animal. And he's hungry. And he longs to feed himself on the pods that these pigs are eating, but nobody will give him anything to eat. So behold, the prodigal son who has lavishly and foolishly spent his relationship with his father, lavishly and foolishly spent the money he got from his father, and lavishly and foolishly has spent his dignity. But did you really need a story about pigs to tell you all of that? I ask because for some of you, this young man's story is your story. You have received from your Heavenly Father your time, your talent, and your treasure, and some of you have turned to your Heavenly Father and said, thanks, but now you're dead to me. And you go off and you spend all that you have received, the relationship with the Father in Heaven, what He has given you, and your dignity, and you spend it all lavishly and foolishly on what can be entitled reckless living. Now that's for some of you. You've lived that life as a prodigal son. Some of you, you look and say, well, no, I've never really done that. Well, that doesn't mean you're any less prodigal than the little brother. Because remember, the father has two sons. There's the older boy as well. And when the father divides the property, he gives the older brother his share as well. And he's got that. And you kind of get the impression that he's a fiscally responsible kind of guy who just kind of tucks that away, but he stays at home, stays with dad, and as he himself puts it, never once, never once, does he transgress one of his father's commands. He's the good son who stays home. But that does not mean that he does not lavishly and foolishly spend that relationship that he has with his father. It happens when the younger brother comes to his senses. The younger brother comes to his senses and he says to himself, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? And then he says, I know what I'm going to do. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he gets up and he goes home. And he goes home to quite a welcome. He gets a new set of clothes, a new set of shoes. He gets a ring. And they have this amazing barbecue of fattened calf all in his honor. There's music, there's dancing, and great rejoicing over the fact that the younger brother has come home. Now the older brother, he's out in the field when all this happens. Why? He doesn't transgress the father's commands. He does what he's supposed to do. He is the good son. But as he gets near the house, he hears the dancing, he hears the music, and he goes up to the one of the servants and says, what's this all about? And the servant says to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. And when the older brother hears that, he's angry. And he refuses to go in. And the father comes out and entreats him. Wants to get him to come in. And the older boy looks at the dad and he says, Look, these many years I have served you and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. Behold, prodigal son number two. For with those words, he has lavishly and foolishly spent his relationship with his family. For not only does he announce, I'm better than my kid brother who went out and hung out with prostitutes, but dad, I'm better than you. And I know better than you. Because you welcomed him home. And you shouldn't have done that. We should have just kicked him out of the family and been that with that. Why are you doing this? I have always obeyed you. And you, even though you gave me half of my property that was coming to me, never gave me a goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Behold the prodigal son. But did you really need all that conversation to tell you that? I ask because for some of you, his story is your story. The Heavenly Father has given you your time, your talent, and your treasure. And you're responsible. And you hold on to it. And you're the good son. And you do what your Father in Heaven requires of you. But then it happens. Somebody you know. Somebody you know really well. Someone you know to be a lavish and wasteful, reckless, living kind of person comes to repentance. They join the church. And you look and say, no way. Uh Uh-uh. I'm not going in and celebrating that. And you complain to the Father in heaven, you know, sinners like that are just too far gone. Sinners like that should not be received into the church. It kind of soils the rest of us to have such a person in our midst. And so you live the life of the prodigal. With that attitude, you wastefully and lavishly spend your relationship with the Father. What a story this is. Not just one prodigal son, not two, but four. The younger boy, the older boy, you, and me. What is a father to do with such prodigal children? Be a prodigal father. Check this guy out. When the younger son comes to his senses and heads for home, while he's still a long ways off, the father has compassion on him. And when he sees his son coming, he runs and he embraces the boy and he kisses the boy. And the boy starts his speech. Treat me as one of your hired servants, for I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father says, no. You are my son. 
Servants, get the robe, put it on him. Get the ring, put it on his finger. Put the shoes on his feet. Kill the fattened calf. We have got to celebrate because this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost and he is now found. And this love of the Father can only be described as lavish and wasteful and reckless. And it envelops his son who has come home with love. And so too with the older boy. The older boy who's complaining, I've done everything right. I've followed your commands. You never gave me a goat, even though you gave me half the property. This young son who has complained that his father has shown love that he should not show. How does the father treat him? He says to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad for this. Your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. No chastisement. No, let me tell you a thing or two, junior. Let me set you in your place. But all that I have is yours. That kind of love can only be described as lavish and wasteful and reckless. And what about you? You who've received your time, your talent, and treasure from the Heavenly Father. Some who have gone off and wasted that in reckless living, and others who have just been so stern and self-assured as to question how the Father receives sinners. How does the Heavenly Father treat you? With a love that is wasteful and lavish and reckless. He sends his only begotten Son into the world to bear your sins upon the tree of the cross. And Jesus bears not just your sins, but the sins of the whole world. He bears the sins of his enemies. And he sheds his blood and dies, and that blood cleanses you from all your sins. And he rises again on the third day. And he greets you in the waters of holy baptism. And he says, not a hired servant, my beloved son, my beloved daughter. He greets you with a love that is lavish, that is wasteful, that is reckless. He envelops you in that love. And he promises that he's going to put a robe of righteousness on you and the crown of life upon your head. And you will have a place at his wedding feast, which has no end, that is going to put the fattened calf barbecue to shame. A love so reckless, so wasteful, so lavish. That's what your Heavenly Father has poured out upon you. The parable of the prodigal son. That's what that Concordia Publishing House Lutheran Study Bible English Standard Version calls it. And prodigal is to spend or give lavishly or foolishly. I think this parable needs a new title. Maybe we should call it the prodigal family. Whereas when we are so lavish and wasteful and reckless in our sin, the Father and our Heavenly Father are as lavish and wasteful and reckless in his love and forgiveness for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.